So, Kenny, I got emotional for a completely different reason. One, it was awesome to see you in the car. <laughs> but two, it took me back 50 years of my dad taking me to Dallas International Speedway, Green Valley, watching the Chelsea King light up a funny car. And here I am at 60 years old going, my God, what is going on? Just matter what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> It was great. Uh, I can't say enough for Antron and that group over there. They're wonderful. He's a sweetheart. Uh, obviously, uh, Lucas Oil for putting it together with Brandon. So it was neat. It's fun. I had a blast. You got in the seat, and they say things like that are like riding a bike. Have things advanced so much for you, or is it still? <clears throat> you won't believe it, but that cockpit is exactly the way mine was for my whole entire career. The fuel shutoff was in the exact right spot. The clutch was perfect. The accelerator, if I had to use it, was perfect. The brake handle was exactly where it was. Wow. The parachute releases were where I was all the time. The seat felt just as comfortable as mine. I felt really snug and good. I mean, I just said that myself. I said, man, this is like home. I'm back home. That's what it was. Nothing was changed at all. Identically the same. So when Antron was explaining some things to you, you guys were leaning over, looking in the cockpit. It looked like his hands were so busy, like he was telling you something new, but no? No, not really at all. The only thing that was new was that when I trimmed the fuel shut, fuel shut off off or back down to not have so much fuel going through it when it first started up, We did in those days I didn't look and read a, 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 a computer. I just did by feel, and, yeah. and then Armstrong would went and nod his head like this. But they got a deal there, and they go to 90 pounds of fuel pressure, so you just move it to 90 pounds, and that's it. There's a piece of cake. Did that, besides bring back memories, did it bring back any sort of, oh, I could go one more, maybe the U.S. <laughs> Nationals? Of course it did. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> I've thought that for the last two or three days, to be really? honest about it. Yeah, well, you know, when you get up to this age and you quit for a long time, you think about how much fun it was, how much you enjoyed it the competition, driving cars fast and winning. And those don't ever go away if they're in your body and you've had them, if you've had that success at times. And no matter how old you are or what you are, unless you're just incapacitated that you couldn't do it, yeah. you have those thoughts. I can still do that. How do I know if I could? Hell, I don't know. We'd go out there and find out so I could tell you. I might hit the throttle and shut it right off. <laughs> if you weren't a drag racer, can you compare your body to where it is now versus a a dude that spent decades in a race car, meaning some of the wear and tear from driving a car for decades? Well, I tell you what, I got beat up pretty good in those years. I've had nine surgeries. I've had four, four in both, both shoulders and a back surgery. And so all that came from being in that race car all those years. And the early years when we had no good seats, we had no good equipment, we just put me a trash can in there, I'm going to drive it. Oh, right. <laughs> Almost. You know, we weren't form-fitted or anything in the day. In fact, we form-fitted the first seat up in Brainerd. I got in there, I hurt my back trying to get in the car and get out. I couldn't get out of the car after the run. My back hurt so bad. Armstrong went down to the local place that sells boats, got that foam stuff. I put my suit on, he poured it down in behind me to fill in the voids that we didn't have. And that's, 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 it came so far. That thing felt like a piece of Cadillac right there, buddy. Whoa. How much would where we are now would have extended your career? Just the seat alone probably would have helped a lot because those surgeries, are they're hard on you no matter what. When you do nine surgeries, it's a tough deal. The back one was the worst, the hardest to heal over. I think if we'd had those seats in the beginning and all that, we certainly, and the cars would have been built stronger with better roll cages. We wouldn't have lost so many people. It's just that simple. Today, they're really, really rocket ships, and they have to be the way they are, and they're wonderful. And when I quit, they were good. This is even better. Yeah. The Bomberito Automotive Group 500 at Worldwide Technology Raceway is not just a race. It's a spectacle. It's time to mark your calendar. Saturday, August 26th and Sunday, August 27th. 2023 is bigger and better than ever before. Get ready for the wildest festival of speed in the Midwest. Go to www.raceway.com now because the first deal is the best deal. Were you a fan at the beginning when the canopy came on? Clearly now we all are like, yes, like you just said, the yeah. cars are built the way they yeah. need to be. Yeah. But at the beginning, was that a little tough for you? I, as a fan, it was a little tough for me. Yeah, I never had a real problem with it at all. I thought I thought it was would, would be okay. Uh, I didn't know if I wanted it or not. 
because our, our windshield was so high, but then there's an advantage to having the canopy for the air going to that supercharger too. So it, they picked up on that pretty quick. So I would have liked to have driven one like that. I think it'd be really cool. I think Brand, I asked Antron, I said, I bet it's really quiet in here, isn't it? Because when you sit in front of the motor going down there, you, you don't have much noise. It's all behind you. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it really is. He said, as quiet as can be, you wouldn't even believe it. You don't even know, realize you're going that fast. And that I can understand that because it's really neat. Yeah. What about the mind set now versus when you were lighting up that rail? I don't think the mindset has changed that if, if I really wanted to get in there and, and he said get in it, if I really wanted to, I'd do it. You know, my mindset wouldn't have to work on that too hard. I got some other issues I'd have to deal with. I wonder how much pain I'm going to be in in certain areas of my body. But, uh, you know, and then you got to say, you got to be honest with yourself and say, is it really worth it to go make one run? What if something drastic happens? You come out and God forbid you become crippled or something. I mean, is it really worth that? And the answer to that is no, it's not. But on the other side, yes, it is. Right. <laughs> now, was Vandermeer in particular really why? I mean, Lucas, Antron, but it's Vandermeer. Yes, well, it's Vandermeer because we were coming because it's going away, but maybe not come back. You never know. But also, it's 42 years that Cheryl and I met here. This is where we met 42 years ago here. We've been together 42 years, 23 of it married. And so this is a special place. Yeah. You see where the NHRA, NHRA is going, and they're losing tracks like this. It's just like, is that just like poking you? Just like, how do we do this? Well, they're losing the tracks because the, the whole world's changing. Yeah. Everything about it's changing. I mean, my goodness, you got a, electric cars they want out there. They want all the stuff that, that we grew up not knowing anything about and don't care about, to be honest about it, okay? So consequently, a track just can't survive anymore on its own, just, just a drag strip. This one could because they promote so well. Yes. And there's four or five that do that and can, so can make it. But it's going to get tougher and tougher, there's no question. A return on investment is still the most important thing in the business. Yep. And, and, and these guys and three or four more of them in the country, they do a great job and they make a hell of a living out of it. But some of them don't. Racing in general, though, has so much to compete with in the sports world, the entertainment world, and racing is kind of suffering a little bit because of that as well. What do you think would be good to get kids involved again in motorsports, aside from the, the typical stuff that's going on now? You know, I don't know, but you're right about what you said about all, all the opportunities for other things to do and watch. It's a, it's a tough game for, for all of the motorsports. I mean, you don't even know what IndyCar hardly is. God bless you, IndyCar. I don't mean that to be bad about it, but the fact is it's a toughie. Formula One's going good, but they're, they're doing a great job by getting these, these venues all over the world and in the United States. But it's tough. I don't know the answers to that at all. I mean, life goes on. Life changes. Yep. Things change around us. We either adapt or we stay the same. And if we can't adapt to it, then we just quit. It's more than just a slogan. General Tire delivers for whatever you do. General Tire's Grabber X3 Mud Terrain Tire offers aggressive styling and is engineered for durability with innovative performance features that are ready to carry you through extreme mud, dirt, and rock-covered terrain. For extreme traction that's ready for anything and rugged styling to match, look no further than the Grabber X3. General Tire delivers for whatever you do. Check out GeneralTire.com today. General Tire, aggressively styling the speed freaks since 2001. One. For more than 30 years, Lucas Oil Products has been solving some of the most difficult mechanical problems in the automotive, marine, and industrial industries. From our original Core 4 products, heavy-duty oil stabilizer, power steering, stop leak, transmission fix, and fuel treatment, we have now developed over 400 custom products to help solve some of the world's toughest mechanical issues. Go to lucasoil.com to see what we have in store for you. Lucas Oil. It works. We'll end it with this. Going back to when I was 10, watching you at Dallas International Speedway, you at 10, 15, 20, who was the Kenny Bernstein uh, back in your day? Who was the guy that you thought, holy smokes, I get to meet the Kenny Bernstein of my day back in the 60s? Or well, obviously, that's, that's a pretty easy deal. I mean, anybody from the West Coast, no. when, except for one guy named Garlitz from the East Coast, he was the, he was the king then, believe me, and uh, you always wanted to meet him. But Perdome, uh, all those guys, they would come to Texas to race. They'd race us in Amarillo at the 
California versus Texas all the time, and it was a war. And of course, Texans wanted to beat those Californians because they were prune pickers, and so that, that's the way it was. But all those guys were great. I mean, really, well, I look back at Benny Osborne. Do you remember Benny oh Osborne? Gosh. Huh? How about that? Come on. He was King Kong for about two or three years. He whooped every everybody all over the country. He won ten grand at Orange County one night. They had a, a race for t between two cars, Tom McEwen and Osborne. One run, no warm-up, no anything. Pull up there, run for ten thousand dollars. Now that was forty-five, fifty years ago. Think about that for for that kind of money, and Benny beat him and won the money. And that's a, that was Osborne was in back because he was smoking Oklahoma, so we 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 had to deal with him all the time. A lot wow. of good guys. I mean Eddie Hill. Mm -hmm. My goodness, that's first real. time I saw Eddie in all his purple with a twin-engine Pontiac on that thing, huh? I mean it was crazy. So it, it's it, memories back there are great. I right. drove for the Carroll Brothers and the Anderson Brothers, and I both, Vance Hunt gave me my first ride. Vance Hunt put me in the car on a Wednesday night, the first time I ever sat in one Vance of those cars. Vance Hunt? Vance Hunt. That's how long. That's 1968. Holy smokes. Yeah. So I got Before a lot, Chelsea Kitt. Yeah, I got a lot of memories from those those people and people. Wade Simpson, all of them. They're great people. Wonderful people. Yeah. Well, you've been kind to us so many, many No, no, years. you've been kind to me. Come on now. I well, mean, and I mean that. I enjoy being with you. I enjoy talking to you. And you mean a lot to us. You always have.